Hey everybody, Kim here at Little Biz Resources, and today we're going to look at the service of creating apps. All right, so this is the third video in a multi-part series. The first video covered the nine services as an overview. The second video were, was um, three ideas for reaching out to find customers or clients in general. And the third through 11th videos, which I actually have decided I'm probably going to go past 11, but the third through 11th videos each cover a different service and help you gain a better understanding of the value you provide offering that particular service. And of course, all of these videos are meant to help you get started if you want to offer different services. It's not a step-by-step, -step, it's not a walkthrough, right? All of us are going to find our own path, but you'll have links to additional resources. They're going to be in each of the video descriptions on YouTube, or you can see all the videos and more information at littlebizresources.com slash nine services. So let's talk about creating apps. Now, a couple things I want you to keep in mind is that the purposes of this video as with all of them, is to give you a better idea of the service and then give you ideas on how you can promote the product, right? This isn't a, this is going to work. I'm not telling you that. I'm just giving you some ideas. They have worked for people before. Um, you need to kind of figure out what works for you. The owners of the particular software programs mentioned, so in this case, it'll be Appomize, will have more information and resources specific to what you purchase. So in this example, you purchase the agency level of the software, they have additional training and guidance. Plus they have multiple Facebook groups you can join and learn more too. So what is an app for a business? Now, again, this entire presentation revolves around the idea of using Appomize to create the app and the link will be in the description. So there are some assumptions, right? And an example of that is you weren't using the Play Stores. So if you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to create an app and I'm gonna put it in the Play Store, I'm going to make a bunch of money off of it. That's not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about creating an app for a business. In this case, the purpose of this app is to connect with your audience more often and in a new way, okay? Existing audience. So, and you'll, you'll see more about this when we go through, okay? The app acts a lot like a bookmark website. So if you think of it like, oh, I'm bookmarking a website, which if you don't do that regularly, then don't think like that. And I think even on the iPhone, it is a bookmarked website. I don't really, I have my daughter's iPhone that I still, and I can't, I can't work that thing. I'm sorry. So I'm sorry for you iPhone people. I'm not going to have a ton of information, but you can always reach out to the owners if you want to do this specific software. Now there are some advantages specifically, right? To apps. You can send push notifications. That's the whole point of that technology is to connect with your mobile devices. And up until recently, if you were to go onto a website on your desktop or even a website on your phone and you were to say, yeah, enable push notifications or yeah, go ahead and send me notifications, they couldn't do it. Right? In fact, many websites still can't send a notification to a phone. They can only send it to a desktop or a laptop, right? They have to send it to an actual computer. So this, this is a newer technology that is out. I say newer because I'm sure it's been out for a while. It's just now reaching the rest of us, the, the non high budget people. Now it's a true, at least in this technology, it's a true mobile first experience because it's built as an app first, right? So it's built with mobile in mind. And because of that, because it's going to be ideal for audiences that have, that are primarily mobile audiences, which by the way, is increasingly more and more people, but you can still access this particular, it's like, it's like I said, it's a website. It's going to have a domain name right? It has a domain name. And if you haven't seen the review, definitely check that out. And because you're going to be at, you can access it with a domain name and that's how you would actually go to get to the, to the app, download the app. You it's acts like a website. So you can still access it from a desktop and a laptop, right? So that's, what's really cool about it is that it kind of is inclusive of both. So what types of businesses can use an app like one from Appomize? So not all businesses need an app. Now I like to say, and I would argue that every business does need an app because it can communicate better with their mm, stakeholders. And that's a word I got from my PhD and I apologize because it's stuck in my brain and I can't get it out, but it's basically stakeholders is everybody who has an interest in your business. So it'd be your customers, your employees, your investors, whatever it is that you, that have a stake in your business and want you to succeed, they need an app. Why? Because they can communicate with their audience. They could have multiple apps, right? If they had literally, if they had people who were investors and needed updates on certain information, you could use this instead of texting or something, right? If it was large enough, but for the most part, 
not all businesses actually need an app at this point. And I would argue any company that doesn't communicate with their audience at least once a week may need to assess the value of an app. And I'm going to give you an example of this. Now, I'm sure not all roofing companies fall into this category. However, when I did my PhD, I interviewed several that were roofing company owners and they do not communicate with their customers. Why? Because a roof lasts for 30 years. The likelihood of the people coming back to them and needing another roof in the lifetime of their business and or that person period, because usually people move like every five years or something, right? So the likelihood of that, of getting a repeat customer from that person is slim. Now that doesn't mean a roofing company can't benefit from it because especially in areas like when I lived in Texas, there were roof repairs constantly there. In fact, roofing companies popped up and would close down for the winterish and then pop back up specifically for the seasons that were, you know, higher weather areas. So springtime into the summer where we had severe weather and everything. So it's not, I'm not saying they can't use an app or that there isn't value, but they have to have a strategy where they're already communicating with their customers, right? Maybe they have um, social media presence. They have email marketing going on. Maybe they're even doing SMS messages. And if not, that might be something you can add on later, which again, look at a review for Appomize. But you know, if, if they're not doing any type of marketing to their audience already, then I don't know that an app would help them. And you'd have to have a conversation with them on that. You know, how are you communicating? Who are you communicating with? How can this improve your business? Now, we as marketers can say, look, this will improve your business because if you're telling people information, for example, a roofing company, and you're saying, hey, I'm going to go ahead and everybody who's a customer, I'm going to have them um, have this app. And once a week, I'm going to talk to them about things that they need to do for maintenance or something. Now, I don't know how much maintenance there is on a roof. But I can tell you now that in Texas, there are times where you would want to put out, hey, there's a severe weather warning um, to help preserve your roof. Make sure you double check your gutters and or something like that, you know, to make sure that there's no water backup, you don't get any damage. And then after the storms are over, you know, send out a message saying, hey, you know what, we're scheduling um, free consultations, hop it and you can actually schedule through the app. So go to our, our scheduling link, you know, get in the schedule link and say schedule your your um, of course, your notification would just be like scheduled today or something. But, you know, those are types of things that you could do as a roofing company. It's just that they don't, you know, most of them don't. They, uh, again, I'm the one of the ones that I interviewed, she'd mentioned that she works with um, businesses. Like she works, she basically is a, a go-between. She's kind of like a contractor that subcontracts everything out. And so she didn't have employees. She didn't have investors. She just was like a go-between. She just found all the, all the places and huge value to a lot of different companies, but it didn't, she would not benefit from an app, right? Now the businesses that benefit the most, this is just Kim thoughts, by the way. And if you go through the sales thing, you'll see of, of Appomize, you'll see they focus on like e-commerce and local businesses. Well, e-commerce, and I would argue smaller shops, um, or, or if they're bigger shops. So like I have an Etsy shop, which we'll talk about a little bit in a little bit, but I have an Etsy shop with over a thousand listings. My sister's shop has like 3000 listings in it. That is not going to be something you would want to put in the app directly, right? So you could literally put products on the app and have people shop in the app, but you'd want to do that for evergreen products or for, and you could even do a big one with evergreen products. But I would argue that a larger e-commerce one would want an app that's in the app store, like Walmart. They want to be in the app store. Why? Because people are going to go to the app store and look for Walmart. But if you're the mom and pop shop down the street, people aren't going to the app store to look for your store. So you don't need one in the app store. And this doesn't go in the app store because it's a different type of technology. So anyway, so e-commerce stores are good because you can have people buy on, on the app or if they're bigger ones and maybe they have too many products and, or it's not evergreen or they're like, Ooh, here's a good one. So when we did, um, resale stuff, so like we, we got stuff out of storage units. Usually I was looking for furniture for our business so we could furnish it, but then we ended up with like half of our entire building with stuff. So we started selling it. Right. And in fact, we started with a school that was getting closed. It was the school was getting rebuilt and they were just selling everything off and they didn't have time. So they just auctioned it all off. And we ended up winning like a fifth of the school. (laughs) It was a nightmare. 
but we need to get the shelves out of it. So we got shelves and chairs and desks and stuff. And we were like, Hey, we have to sell. So you are going on apps to sell all these things. But once that's one way of marketing, right? So I'm going to go on, on five miles. I don't even know if these still exist, by the way, offer up Craigslist, Craigslist does exist. And maybe eBay, you know, these different places where I'm listing these things. But once they come in and they become a customer, if they like that type of stuff, which that's a really big market of people who like that type of stuff. Right. And, and so you could say, Hey, yeah, here's my app, download my app. And I'm going to send out notifications once a week of new stuff that's come in. Right. And so once a week you send out notifications, Hey, check out all the new stuff and you could literally sell it through the app so they could have their physical location or they can do it from home. Right. And they can still sell in other places if they want to, they don't have to necessarily sell specifically on the app. So e-commerce, there's a lot of potential with e-commerce. Now I would say the next one is my favorite and that's not necessarily the easiest, but it's my favorite and that's businesses subject to censorship. So think of things like CBD, right? So when um, specific drugs became legal in some states and not others along the CBD line, it, it's still difficult for a lot of those places to get a bank account, to be able to process stuff, on, process stuff online. So if they're a local business that offers that, they're going to have a tough time being able to run ads and do a lot of different um, marketing things just simply because they're in a restricted or censored industry. And that makes it ideal for them to, once they get in front of somebody who wants their stuff, say, here's my app, download it, and I will communicate with you, right? Okay, when we get the good stuff in next time, we'll let you know, right? That type of thing. Um, this that is, that is one industry where I think it would be huge benefit. Now, political, I was thinking about this because we just ran... Um, it was an election and, and I'm in Eagle Mountain. Of course, I think I talk more about this later, but small area. And we had a, an election for city council, all the city council people, there were like seven people running for two spots. I think maybe three of them put up information. The rest were just like running on their name. I knew nothing about them. I didn't know how to find any information about them. Nothing. This will be a great opportunity. If you're in a smaller area where you have small people who are either running for something or they are in a position or they're just getting involved into politics now and they want to kind of get a following, that's how they can do it, right? Religious, that's kind of a given. Current events are medical. We can talk about that all day long, but we won't. Extreme survivalists, and I'd say thing guns, health and wellness. Well, pretty much anything potentially controversial because it might not, even though it's controversial today and okay, a month from now, a year from now, the next election, it could change, right? So if you start going, look, this is kind of controversial. You need to have a backup. That's going to be one. And I say that because if they're in the, you know, play stores or in the, I say play store, in the app stores, then they have a chance of just getting pulled out of the app stores. And that's unfortunate. Local businesses active with their audience. And I say active, right? And I, I like to use the example of hair and beauty salons because this is really, that's a very passionate industry, but they would be perfect. Restaurants, any business that it can encourage people to stop, stop by and stop by and buy has a huge advantage with an app. And that's because literally you can push out, Hey, you know what? Happy Friday. Come get $5 off today. Right? I mean, you can do that with e-commerce too. It's just with local business, you know, that Friday people are driving home. It's a busy day. Stop by on your way home, pick this up for five bucks off, whatever it is, you know, your pizza place, your favorite coffee, um, an ice cream stand. I mean, gosh, I think about those places that, um, are little pop-up places, the like little, oh gosh, when I was a kid, we called them roach coaches, but they're not, they're actually very nice now. At least the ones here are, they're like little taco stands and stuff. No, I want tacos, but those taco stands, you know, they rotate where they're at. And what if they could, and I think here in our city, they actually have a place that you can track them. And there's some places that have trackable apps and everything. And that's great. But if somebody's dedicated to you, then they don't want to know where all the other places are. They want to know where you are and they want to know what you're offering and they want to know what your specials are. And they want to know, you know, if it's really busy or if it's, Hey, it's slow right now, stop by, you know, something like that, where you can push out information to kind of help drive traffic back. And that's, that's what is for local businesses. That's pretty powerful, right? And I'm not saying like every hour you're going to have a Twitter feed or something. I don't get Twitter, but anyway, I don't, I don't say, I'm not saying that I'm saying, you know, if you have a strategic plan, you know, every day, every Thursday is slow for your business or you know, well, your client's business. You could say, Hey, you know what? Push out a notification on Thursday mornings that say 
all day today, buy one, get one free on donuts or whatever it is, right? You can even offer this to groups and clubs. Now, I thought about this because of our Girl Scout troop and I don't know that they would let us, but some and that made me think about, oh my God, you know what? That would be kind of cool if you had all the parents, the grandparents, you know, the family members and everything, they were all kind of like involved with the app. And then when you're selling cookies, you push it out and say, hey, make sure you go to your kid's link or maybe you even have the links for all the kids in there because it's all online now. Um, or you could have, and they actually do have a, an app, I think, where you can list where they're selling at the time. It's really convoluted. And even though I'm involved in Girl Scouts with my daughter, it's like, I'm going, oh my gosh, this is, this is hard, right? This is hard. And, and so, because it's like, it's so scattered, there's not like one place. And I have a lot more arguments about signing up and about their gift shop and everything else. It's just, they have made this so fragmented. It's difficult. And I'm like, well, you know what? If we had an app just for a group, now we use a group app to communicate, but that's not everybody, right? That's just a handful of people in there that are just trying to figure out where do I drop my kids off? And so what if we were to like get them involved in more than that? And we could probably use the app that way. But the problem with those group apps versus something like this is that anybody can say anything with this, your client. So the business owner gets to push the information out and they don't have to listen to people go, well, I don't like this. Or you have a typo or anything else. Hopefully no typo, no typos, but all right. So why is the app important? Right. And this is where I go. It's really difficult for me to express the value that I see in this. So hopefully this helps a little bit, but every online business asset focuses on one thing generating leads and you can call it leads or customers or sales or whatever, right? It's to make money. You make money when you make sales, when you, you know, are whatever, however it is you're making that money right now. When you set up a Facebook page, it's to help communicate with your audience, right? So the purpose of that business asset is to communicate with your audience. You're giving them information. You're helping them understand the product. You're warming them up to your product. Then you're selling the product, right? This is all stuff that you're doing to help communicate with your audience. You post a new article or blog post on your website in a form of communication with your audience. You are providing information to people who are looking for it. So let's look at how much of your audience do you reach? And I was actually working on this before I started this whole app thing. And then the app thing, Appomize came out and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the answer. Well, at least one of the answers. So free traffic reach, that's organic reach. When you post and you're not paying for ads, what is your reach? Facebook, one to 5%. Okay. Instagram, five to 25%. And this is of your audience. So we'll run some numbers later. So just keep these numbers in mind. LinkedIn, two and a half to 10%. Okay. So the question is, if you can't reach more than, even if you reach a different people on every one of these platforms, the maximum reach at this point is 40% between those three platforms. And if you're like me, not your, your audience isn't on all of these. So you're not reaching a large part of your audience. And let's say, what about email marketing? This is the big thing that cracks me up, right? Oh my gosh, everybody should be focused on email marketing. That's all they should focus on because that's how they're going to get sales and that's how they're going to make money. And I hear this all the time. And I don't disagree that email marketing is important, but it's another channel of communication. So MailChimp, which everybody pretty much knows about, and that's why I chose that one, reports the average email open rate is 21.33%. And I guarantee you average does not mean most people. Average is going to be, you know what? We've got people who are really good at email marketing. They're good at getting opens. They have their fine-tuned audience. They're going to have a much higher percentage than the rest of us who are still getting to that point, right? Because this is a very misleading number. I think 21.33% is a high email open rate for most businesses. I would argue that most local businesses, e-commerce, all of these, it's probably under that a little bit. And again, it just depends on how established it is, what they're offering, et cetera, et cetera. Email marketing requires you to capture your audience's attention, but a push notification is right in front of your audience. It's right on their phone, right? An email, they have to go into their email app. Even if they get the notification that they have an email, they may open it. And if the headline doesn't catch, catch their attention, it's done, right? So your title of your email, oh, I didn't catch their attention. They didn't recognize it, whatever it was. They were busy at the time. 
they dismiss it. Now they can do the same thing with push notifications, but more than likely the people who are putting the push, who are downloading your app and getting push notifications are the people who are hardcore and they want your information. So when they see it, they're going to stop and they're going to look at it, right? In emails, it's very easy to get pushed to the bottom. Now don't eliminate another marketing method. This should complement and help your current marketing efforts. And that's what you need to make sure you tell your clients, right? Do not say, oh, this is going to replace all of your efforts. It's not. It should improve their efforts. It should help them. So what type of customers would download your app? Okay. The app is for your audience members that want your information. If they don't want to miss out on your offers, your announcements, whatever it is that you want, that you provide, they want, right? So let's take a look at a full marketing cycle without any ads. So we're not paying for ads in this case. Okay. So here's like an e-commerce marketing example. So this would be, if you're, if you are in e-commerce, this would be an example for you. If you are trying to create this as a service for somebody, which is kind of the point of the video, then you're thinking of an e-commerce client. And I'm going to take this as an, this is your client we're talking about. Okay. So the client they're going to run a Labor Day sale on Etsy. Well, okay. They announce the sale on Friday on their social media pages, or you can announce the sale on Friday on your social media pages, whatever it is. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook shows 0.5% of your audience on Friday, 0.5% on Saturday, and then stops. And you go, wait a second, Kim, you said one to 5%. Why can't it be 5%? It's Labor Day. You're competing with everybody. So we'll be lucky to get 1% on Labor Day weekend because people are out shopping. They're not on their phones. They're going to have lower real estate there and a bunch of ads running, right? But I'm doing that because it's Labor Day weekend. So we'll say you reach 15% of your audience on Instagram. You send out an email competing with everyone else running Labor Day sales. Okay. But we're going to go with the 22% of your audience opens your email. So what happened to your social media people? Let's look at the click-through rates. Okay, so click-through rates of Facebook, 1%, Instagram, 0.22%, Twitter, 1.64%, Pinterest, 0.28%, email marketing, 2.5%. Now, some of these numbers may be for ads because it was very difficult to find an actual click-through rate for organic. So we're just, that's the numbers we're gonna have to go with. Your audience is rarely identical on all platforms, though you'll likely have some of your audience on multiple platforms. And the reason why I say this and point this out is because just because somebody saw it on one platform does not mean that they, it caught their attention, right? And so you should be, hopefully your audience is on more than one platform. And this is part of why you should do email is that they missed it. They, maybe they, they missed it on the first one because they were scanning, they were looking for something in their feed and you just weren't on their mind and didn't capture their attention. So they just went right by it. Okay. Well, that counts as a view. So now they get in their email and they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know they were running a sale. And you're like, wait, you just saw my post. And they're like, uh, did I? Right? Because that's the way social media is. So your, your audience, while it is rarely identical on all platforms, you should have some overlap as much as possible. And you should encourage people to be on multiple platforms, especially the ones that they're on the most. But with the percentages at 1% to maybe 25% on Instagram, you're going to have a really tough time getting in front of people. So that's why email is important because then you have a secondary way or third, whatever way of reaching them. Plus now with an app, which we'll talk about in a second. Well, actually let's keep going. So all numbers are hypothetical. So your average followers, let's say you have 10,000 people per platform. Congratulations. That's actually a pretty good number. Email list is 3000 people. And again, this is probably your client, but let's just put yourself in the client's shoes. Okay. So Facebook reach a hundred people click through one person. Right? remember we said like a 1% click through. Instagram reach 1500 people click through three people and you go, wait, Kim, why wouldn't more people click through if it reached hundred people? Cause remember this is Facebook. People are looking for their cat videos. They're scrolling and scrolling. So you may have been shown to a hundred people, but those hundred people, if they don't click, then there's not much you can do. Right. I mean, other than retarget them and, and pay for ads and email them and send push notifications. So the Instagram reach, right? You got 1500 people flipping through Instagram, looking for their cat photos. I don't know what they look for on Instagram. And you have a click through of three people. Twitter. Yeah. Okay. First of all, if you're on Twitter, I don't know why, but good luck. Um, I could not find any information about a percentage for Twitter reach. So we're going to go with maybe 1500 people. I mean, you're probably lucky if you reach that. I've never had a huge Twitter following. I've posted on there purely for SEO value. And I don't even think that's that 
that valuable anymore. But anyway, so your click through rate, let's just say is 24.6 people. Oh, Twitter's great. No, probably not. That's probably a huge, hugely overinflated number, but let's just pretend. Now your email open rate, we sent it out to 3000 people, 22%, 640 people opened click through 16 people. So your total click through 44.6, and that's assuming that you actually have a Twitter following and Twitter actually showed it to people, right? Okay. How many people could you reach with an app? Now I want you to keep in mind, I'm going to keep repeating this. Okay. The only hardcore followers will download your app the casual people, and you want them. You only want the hardcore followers there. You want the, the hyper buyers. You want the people who love your stuff. And so and let's say half of them correctly and intentionally allow notifications. Perhaps it's because they all have Androids and iPhones don't work. I don't know. But let's just say only it reaches only half of them. Maybe a thousand people from all your audiences download that because remember we have 10,000 on multiple places. I think a thousand people downloading an app is probably a a possibility. I mean, it's, again, this is just a number and they're all fake, fake numbers. So, so half of them have notifications turned on. That's 500. You send a push notification and you have a 20% click through rate. Now I think that's a pretty good, because remember this is hardcore. These are your, your hot audience, right? These aren't your cold audience. These aren't your warm audience. This is your hot audience. And so you're going to have a much higher click through rate, right? So a hundred people go to your offer now. Okay. A hundred people instead of 40 something. Now you still want those 40 something from the other channels and some of them may overlap. And so may, may end up being 120 people overall, but you're going to get a heck of a lot more people because you have push notifications, right? So you think about this, how this applies to your client. That's how, so all these numbers are hypothetical, hypothetical, but it is safe to assume that your click through rate on push notifications is higher than emails or social media. Okay. It's going to be a lot higher because of the fact that you are communicating with your hardcore followers. So what are the benefits of an app? I'm going to highlight the benefits of an app from Appomize, which is the software I recommend you utilize, especially for getting first, first getting started. The app is directly downloaded to the customer or client's mobile device. So it bypasses the app stores and you go, Kim, well, wouldn't my client want to be in the app store? Maybe. And then this wouldn't be for them. But really this is going to be for the businesses that don't want to pay thousands of dollars and have to pay regularly to be in an app store. And they don't want to have to have it developed and updated and everything else. And on top of that, it, there's a lot of competition in the app store. Cause I mean, I get, I got this, this is something that I heard somebody say, well, I want to be in the app store because then if, if I'm in, the, if I'm in like the play store or whatever, then somebody will find me and they'll download it and they'll, they'll become my customer. <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Probably not. Um, it's the same thing, you know, like you can go in and Walmart probably pays to be sponsored or whatever at times. And so they'll show up for certain terms, but it's the same thing as everywhere else, right? You've got to have a motivation for your client to download your customer, or your client to download the app, and they're not going to go searching for you unless they have that reason. And more than likely you're telling them, Hey, this is what the reason is. And you're giving them that information. So you don't need to be in the app store. And I would argue that you don't want to be in the app store when places like Google and Apple are censoring whatever they want. I mean, think about that. If Trump had an app, it would have been shut down by now. Right? So if we think about that and go, you know what, Trump, you need this app, right? Communicate with all your people this way. You can send them push notifications. It also connects with SMS and email. So have at it. Now this app can also act as a website, which is really kind of cool. Okay. And we'll talk more about exactly how this applies, but it means less maintenance for the client and less chance of potential technological issues between platforms. It doesn't have to act as their website. As I mentioned before, it can be a standalone communication tool, but it can also act as the website for those who don't. And I actually found an example, which we'll talk about push notifications go straight to the phone. So just like your bank notifying you of a deposit or overdraft or whatever, or Facebook telling you someone replied to your comment. I don't know how to shut those off. You're getting a push notification straight to your phone. And that means that they are seeing it. How do I find businesses that need an app? If I were offering this as a service, I would target and guys, I have clients already that are in line for this. So I'm not really competition right now, maybe later, but not now local businesses or smaller e-commerce stores. Okay. That's what I would target, right? Local businesses because they are local and they can definitely benefit. And then smaller e-commerce stores because they don't need to be on a big app, right? So big e-commerce stores that don't fit into censored. So if they're not being censored, 
then they really should get a more robust app and go through the app stores. And that's because the Walmarts of the world are being searched on the app store. So that's where they should be. But the local mom and pop shops not getting lo- get not they're not looking for them there. So they don't need to be there. Okay, businesses that have less than quality websites, for example, they are not truly mobile friendly. I cannot tell you how many local businesses fall into this. But especially local businesses that have that also have a poor experience website. And that's because they really need to be able to communicate with their customers. So if they're like, hey, well, we're putting out Facebook updates, freaking evil mountain. Um, that would be our city government, by the way. In fact, I might even argue if you're in a small enough town and they don't have the technology, reach out to them because they could fall into this too. So, you know, you put out an, an information and say such and such road's going to be closed from 10 to 4 today and you're putting it on Facebook and you have a 1% reach. How many people in your city are actually finding out that the road is closed? Not very many. 1% or less sometimes. So because that's the other thing that I didn't talk about with, with uh, social media is that they also determine when you get to see the post, right? So on Facebook, I'll get... I'll get a notification that's three days after it was posted on the Eagle Mountain website. And I'm on there regularly. I'm probably one of their most active followers. And I will get notified three days after they put up the notification that the water's out in an area. Thank goodness it wasn't my area. Now, granted, if my water was out, I'd probably go to Facebook and look there because they don't have anywhere else to go. Anyway, that's, that's enough complaining about my city, town, whatever you want to call it. All right. So businesses that have a higher chance to get censored. And again, I've talked about this a lot, but you might want to reach out to your local politicians if they're small enough. They need to be small enough. And I don't want to be cynical here, but the higher up a politician gets, the more likely they are bought by someone that will control their website or communication. Okay. They will be controlled by someone, um, whether they are high enough that they have now have a, um, oh my gosh, not a spokesperson. I can't, you'd think I know this. this is like my world, but anyway, they have somebody who would basically monitor everything that they say. An example of this is our local city council that they had an election just a month ago or whatever. And we have an estimated population of 45,000 people. And I mentioned there were seven of them running and every single one of them had like the, so I think we had like three or four that had actual information, maybe three that actually had legitimate information and they all set up their own websites and they did all this stuff. But imagine Imagine that if you have, if you know somebody who's like, Hey, I'm going to get into politics. I'm going to run for city council. You need a following if you're going to keep going. So if they definitely want to be in politics, you need to be their best friend because you can help them. I would also recommend you align with their general political views. Otherwise it's going to be really tough for you to send them those push notifications. All right. So any business that needs to improve their reach for their existing marketing, if they're having trouble reaching, if they're posting stuff on Facebook and they're getting that 1% reach and they're posting stuff on Instagram and they're lower at that 5% and they're posting stuff on Twitter and never getting seen because that's probably the likelihood they're posting stuff on YouTube and they're not getting in front of, you know, even a fraction of their their followers. They need this because this is what they need to do. They need to say, look, I can't get a hold of you. All of these other entities are controlling my communication to you. Let's take out that control and let's connect together. Right. And here's how you do it. So now you need to analyze what are your current resources. When you offer a service to another business, you are now doing business to business marketing. So B2B marketing. This is different than reaching a retail or consumer audience. So now we're talking about you, not your client, not your customer, whatever it is. We're talking about you as selling this as a service. Okay. When you are trying to sell your service, you're not selling it to an individual. You're not going to your mom and saying, Hey, will you buy this from me? right? Unless your mom happens to be a business owner because you are targeting other business owners. So you are business to business. I will tell you for some reason, this is one of the hardest things for people who are offering products or services to understand. Okay. I think there is huge value in being able to go to retail or business, whichever you want to do, but you have to understand what your market is. You need to know your audience. Average Joe on the street is not going to purchase this product. Okay. So you are now not going to be able to go down and sit in front of Walmart and sell your service. That's not going to happen. You could try maybe if you're lucky, but the majority of people walking in there are consumers, right? They're not going in there because some of them are, but most of them are not. Now, this, again, this is a, a concept that for some reason I see this in groups all the time where they're going, Oh, Hey, I just want to 
run an ad. You maybe can, right? You maybe can, but you need to make sure it's on the right platform. You need to make sure it's to the right audience. You need to make sure it's the right, right words that you're using, right? So there's a, there's a lot more to it when you start doing business to business, because when you're doing consumer, literally they can go buy a picture. Oh, that picture is pretty. I'm going to go buy something now. I know you think I'm making fun of it, but it's true. I've done it. So I know it's true. <laughs> I know other people have done it. So I know it's true. Right. I mean, that's how jewelry is sold. Ooh, pretty shiny. Ooh, I went on my finger. Yay. Bye. Um, that's, that's the whole purpose of jewelry. Right? So you've got to think about this from, okay, now how is another business owner going to buy from me? How do I get them to buy from me? And it's not by giving them some sort of flashy picture. It's going to be by talking to them and having a discussion. That is hard to do. Not the discussion, but hard to get in front of the decision makers. Okay. So that you need to determine your audience. Where are they? You know, are you going to be targeting hair salons, beauty salons? Are you going to be targeting roofers? Are you going to be targeting the, um, um, sorry, I want to say coffee shops, but they're not coffee shops, but the not Starbucks because Starbucks is a big brand, which we'll talk about, but will we, you know, the local mom and pop coffee place, you know, are you targeting, what are you targeting? Are you targeting a specific niche? Are you targeting local? Are you targeting, um, e-commerce right now? So you got to think about who can you help? What do you understand enough? And if you don't, then you just got to get started somewhere, right? Go start with a group. Be like, Hey, you know what? This soccer team, you guys need an app. For you and your your hardcore followers, everybody who's going to buy a shirt when you put it on the on the print on demand site, you need to have an app for that so that you don't they don't miss it, right? So that Uncle Joe who lives over in Florida doesn't go, man, I didn't see that email. He got a push notification, right? So you might want to just start there, build it, and then guess what they're going to do? They're going to go tell other people, and then they're going to and then they'll find somebody else and they're going to refer them to you. That's how traditional business to business works, and it still works that way by word of mouth referral. So you just need to determine your audience and get started. And if you don't know where your audience is or you're not sure where, start somewhere, pick something, right? Go start talking to people and start saying, Hey, how can I help you go to your, if you have a small school or if you have, um, you know, like a group, you know, like I said, ugh, this would have been great for our handbell group when I was in high school. Of course the internet had just come out then. So I think apps were far away since we didn't have smartphones yet. No, wait, we did. No, wait, we didn't. We did in high school. They came out. Okay. Sorry. I did. I forgot. I was carrying one around all high school. So now you know how old I am roughly. So think about your, how you want to help them and how it helps them. So business is doing other marketing. So like if they're doing Facebook marketing, if they're doing Instagram marketing, whether it's paid or not is irrelevant though. If they're paying for stuff, that does mean they have a budget. Usually though, I'll tell you that they'll go, Oh, it's not in our budget for this year. Check back with us next year. I'm like, well, you know what? Then they're just blowing you off. So a lot of times it's better to reach out to the ones that aren't, if they are running it, they're not running a lot, or if they're not running any ads at all, because they're obviously interested in communicating. They're just don't know how, and this is where you're helping them, right? So businesses doing other marketing might be better than businesses not doing marketing, but they might not, right? So if you find a business that, and I'm going to show you one, it may or may not be good. It's a hair salon, beauty salon one. But it's so it's probably a bad example, but it's a good example of how to find one and what you're looking for. So anyway, I mentioned in the three methods to find prospects and leads when offering services. That's the title of the video on YouTube. You can find business prospects through Instagram, Google My Business and LinkedIn. There are other places as well. Those are the three that I focused on because those are um, three popular places that you can go right now. Facebook is really difficult, right? You can't. It's hard to reach people. People are burned out of getting their spam messages. So you might have to get creative. And this is all online stuff, by the way. We'll talk about traditional stuff in a minute. So let's take a look at an Instagram search example. Even though hair salons, beauty salons are difficult, and that's because a lot of them are, there's an owner that owns the building and they rent out spots inside. So the owner of the building isn't interested in driving traffic in, right? They're interested in bringing in people who want to pay for the chairs. So their target market is business to business, whereas the people in the chairs they are the ones that have to kind of market their own. Now it depends. I'm sure there are some places that are better at that, but if you can come in at a decent enough price, the owner may be interested in saying, Hey, yeah, why don't we just go ahead and have everybody pitch in five bucks a month or whatever it ends up being and I'll pay for the setup fee. And then we'll just 
send out notifications and this is what we're going to do, right? So you could go to an owner of a hair salon or beauty salon and say, this is what I think. I think you could pass on, you know, the five, if you have 10 salon people, we're going to have a $50 charge. You could put together a packet pretty easily and it would probably catch their attention at least, right? Anyway, it's difficult to get them to commit to marketing, but let's take a look at one of those because it was on my brain. So steps first, we're going to search Instagram for local shops. Now I'm going to, I did it manually and you can do this manually, or you can check that YouTube video I mentioned and you can see how to do it with software. Then you're going to review their profile. Can they benefit from an app? Right. And I did a little bit of searching here and I'll show you, can they benefit from an app? Because if they can't, if you cannot see a clear benefit to it, it's going to be really hard for you to make the sale. Okay. If you can see a clear benefit and say, look, if you do this, you're going to do your problem. You can't guarantee results, but you can say, look, this is how we can increase your reach and get repeat customers and get, find your loyal buyers and consolidate them into one place. So you have to think about, you know, do, can they actually benefit? Then do they have another website? Are they on Google my business? So are they are in local searches? And then again, go back to how will the app help their business? Okay. So let's look at Instagram. So I'm going to hop over there real quick if I can find it. All right. So I did a search and I did um, hair salon in Salt Lake city because that's like the closest big city here. And, um, it's actually, I think there's a bigger one or a, a closer one, but this is the main big city around here. Right. So I found this one. Now I honestly, if I were initially looking at this, I would go, "Mm, I don't think they're going to be interested, but something that makes me quite, and honestly, they may not need it, right? They may not want it. Who knows? This is the types of things you have to just start off with and go, well, I'm going to find out. I need to find, I don't know anything about this industry myself other than it exists. And that in my mind, I know that it has a huge following. It has a lot of people who are passionate about it. So in this case, they only have 170 followers. So I don't think Instagram is their primary marketing method because they only have a handful of posts and I'm going to check this one here, right? So this one was in, they're talking about this a month ago. And so they probably posted this about a month ago and this is their hiring. And I also did this because I wanted to see where they were. So it says Midvale, Utah. I was just double checking because I'm like, I didn't see it up here. They don't have a link. So that's one thing they need to do. But the reason why they don't have a link and I hopped over, I honestly didn't know it was the same company. So I I looked at it. I'm going, I don't know which one it is. this it or not? Is this it or not? So when I saw that it was Midvale, I'm like, this has got to be it right here. Right? So I come in here and I find there, I clicked into there specifically. They don't have a website here. So I don't even know if they have a website. I would assume they don't. Maybe they do. This one says saltsalon.com. Let's see what that one says. No, I don't want it here. I want it here. They could be, you know, a franchise or something. Nope. That's for sale. So probably not them. And I would guess that they don't have a website. And if they don't have a website, guess what? They need an app. Why? Because it could be a website too. Plus they can put all of their um, push notifications out for all types of stuff. So let's see. So I showed you that that's really easy, right? Search. Okay. Hey, reaching out to them is a whole nother thing because this one, in fact, I had to click into here to get their information, right? So here's, they can, you can DM them text or call and then email. So they didn't have a website listed. They do have a phone number here and then they have an email. You could even email them and say, Hey, you know what? Um, you know, do some sort of like personalized video and say, Hey, in fact, there's a resource for that, which we'll talk about another time, but you could do some sort of personalized thing and go, Hey, you know what, this would be really beneficial to you. And here's what I recommend. And then you, you know, can you, can we talk about this and see what they say? So, um, they are small enough that you could still connect, connect with the decision maker, but they may not be big enough to be able to pay for it. So that's something you have to keep in mind is that this might be a little too small, but until you start going around and looking that's, that's the guessing you have to do. All right. Oops. Did I go too far? All right. So let's talk real quick about how it helped their business. So when you think about it, you look at it, you go, wait a second, you have nowhere other than Instagram with a few pictures. What about if you were sending people pretty pictures of hair that they want? So that's the second thing that, that you could sell by pictures, right? Jewelry and then hair salon stuff, the hair goo, whatever it is. And this isn't just exclusive to women, by the way, there are plenty of men out there 
that take their hair seriously. And, you know, I take my hair as seriously as far as I can run a brush through it. So I don't, I don't understand it, but I do know that they do. My, um, one of my stepsons, he is, he's a dad now and everything, but he cracks me up because he's got to have his hair like a certain way. It's all falling out now, just like his dad's. Shh, don't tell him. And I, it cracks me up though, because he's got to have a special hair gel. He goes to a special stylist and everything. And I went, though, he's a hardcore follower of that particular, you know, hairstylist or place. So he would be perfect. He would download the app. He's in the right age range for that. He would download the app happily, have it on his phone. He would love to see, oh my gosh, there's a new hair. This, so I saw somebody else get this hairstyle. You posted it. You sent it out. There's a not- your weekly notification where you put it on Instagram and let us know. Hey, you know, I'd love to see that. So again, we'll talk more about how you can implement that, but think about how it can help them, right? It can help them by driving traffic, repeat traffic back to their site. They're, they're getting people who already like them back in, right? They're not going to reach them through Instagram. So why not put it on the push notifications and you can schedule that out in advance. So you could tell them, Hey, look, give me four, you know, take four pictures over the next week of people's hair, different hairstyles, and we'll schedule it one a week for the next four weeks. Right. And they're paying you for that service. So this is, it's something you just got to think about how it's going to help them. All right. So now let's talk about an example for one of our projects. And I'm doing this specifically so you can kind of see how it would work together. So this is what we're already doing. So we are selling on Etsy, right? So my sister and I sell on Etsy. We sell products to make things. So we have supplies. Little Biz Resources teaches people how to promote their their, um, businesses and everything else, right? So we teach how to sell on e-commerce, so on Etsy and everywhere. So our audience, we have two different audience members here, right? We've got people, we've got the end users, so we've got consumers, but we also have business owners, right? So really our primary office is other shop owners and pe- or people who have or want a business, right? So that's kind of where our, our main audience is. And yes, we hit, we hit a lot of the craft side. So what we do is we set up Crafty Universe to help with this. We're still revamping everything and trying to get it all going again, because I had to move it off of its hosting, but um, this is so with the website and the website supports handmade shops. So we feature them. We talk about them. We try to get, get the site to rank and help bring traffic in, help get people motivated, people who are looking for handmade or made in the USA. Then we have, you know, our YouTube channel for little biz resources, which helps the, the sellers as well. Cause remember our primary audience is going to be other shop owners. So we have videos, we have Facebook posts, we have Instagram posts sort of that's coming, but, and then we have Pinterest pins, right? We also have a sweepstakes giveaway and contest. This is for both our consumers. And then we have another one for our shop owners that are interested, right? So we're like, wait, so how on earth would an app fit in? You already have emails. We do have emails. I didn't put it on here, but we have emails going on. We have now, now that I've fixed my typo, we have, um, social media stuff going on. We've got, we're on Etsy already. So we get traffic from Etsy, right? People see my information on Etsy. They come over here and join me a little bit as resources, or they, they, um, sign up for, you know, they like the shop and they get notifications from Etsy. So they're getting notified by a bunch of places. And yet only a fraction of my audience, whether they're on Etsy or little bit resources, only a fraction of my audience gets reached. Why? Because all of these platforms decide who, when, and where they're going to, and how they're going to send notifications, right? Etsy might send an email. They might just send a push notification. They might not send anything and just have it in there so that when they come back into the store, they see it. They see that they have a notification there. And if me and the six other shops that they liked are all giving them notifications, they may miss it. So really YouTube, and this is actually, it's funny. My sister's son, so my nephew, he's 11 and he's like arguing with her about how, cause she's like, well, I'm going to do an app for our YouTube followers. And he's like, why YouTube already sends notifications. And I went, really? Cause I don't get any. And I have the, the notifications hit. I have it triggered. I get none. Right. And I'm like, I don't understand. And I'm like, I don't know why it's, if it's turned off or what it's going on. And I'm like, and I was looking and maybe half of the people might, might see a notification. And usually it's not them getting the notification. It's them going in and checking their subscriptions. Those are hardcore YouTube followers right? Those are the hardcore YouTube followers. If you have people like me who are not hardcore YouTube users or followers or whatever, then you're, and I'm, I don't go to Facebook and check people's pages. I don't go to Instagram and check people's pages. And Pinterest is just a nightmare. I mean, I can go to somebody's profile and say, I'm going to see all the stuff that they saved, right? I kind of rely on each of their feeds to show me what I'm supposed to have. And I'll tell you what, YouTube is more interested in showing me about Justin Bieber's new haircut. I don't know if that was a thing. I just thought of that. 
because it popped in my head because that used to be super popular. You know, I'm just what the Backstreet Boys are doing right now, whatever. They're more interested in showing me that. And I'm going to, I think they just do this because they know my age, though. I don't know how, how Justin Bieber fits into that because he's too young. So I'm like, maybe because I'm female and I'm supposed to like, go, oh, who knows? But in this case, even if they're getting these notifications, again, we said this, they may not capture their attention enough, but we push a notification on here. Hey, we're selecting winners on Friday. Make sure you go in and do X, Y, and Z. And so in our sweepstakes, we have people that need to go watch a video or, and the, usually the video is giving them instructions for something. So watch this video to make sure you are doing this correctly. And then we're like, Hey, you know what? Um, share something here. Not, and not necessarily our stuff, right? It could be other shop members. It could be their stuff. We're giving them actions that they need to do to help with their, their business. And when they do that, we reward them. And then we say, Hey, we're going to select from the winners. So when we do this, right, when we do this, we can tell shop owners, they can like or share other shops. They can engage in social media. We can tell them about an Etsy sale or a new notification, like new products, right? We can do, um, we can send them information about shop owner resources. We can send them sponsored announcements. So if let's say another shop says, Hey, I want you to tell people about my sale, right? Then we could do that. And so these are all things that we could do and to help support the other business owners. And so if you think about it like that and think about, okay, really what you need to do is figure out who is going to be downloading the app and what benefit is it to them? And then you can reverse engineer it. Or you can say, what benefit do I want to get out of it? What customers do I want to be downloading it, right? Maybe perhaps you have an Etsy shop and you want their customers to get it so that they get specials right? Or maybe you, maybe they're an Etsy shop owner and you want to take them off of Etsy. Sorry, Etsy, but you know what? You do some of the stuff you're doing that those words come out and you're like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to have my own shop. I'm put it on somewhere else. I'd say Shopify, but they're not any better lately. Um, I'm going to make my own WooCommerce shop and I'm going to drive my traffic over there. And you're like, Hey, you know what? This is what I want to do. Now I'm going to tell you one thing I also didn't add in here. And that's because it's not part of the shop owners is we do have a rewards and loyalty program attached to our Etsy store. So we could do the same thing here because a lot of them, a lot of the people who are the shop owners that buy from us, we could make it exclusive to them, right? They get rewards or they get, they get something specifically because they make purchases. We could do that too. So there's a lot of different ways that you can implement a multiple services, right? Look at video, 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 video. You could do video marketing, right? You could, and we'll talk more about this in a second, but you can do um, copywriting. You can do app notifications. You can do, you can manage social media. I mean, there's so many services that you can attach to this and make really good packets for them to help them. But you really just need to sit down and figure out what it is that they, their end goal is and what they need help with. So communicate the value to your customer. And unfortunately, this burden lies on the marketer's shoulders, right? This, this burden lies on us as marketers and service providers. We have to be able to show them the value before they're ready to buy. If you can make them have a return on their investment, they are more likely to stay with you and they're more likely to make that purchase in the first place. So expand on how the business benefits with an app, right? They can target their most, most loyal customers who will never miss whatever it is. Is it an offer, a sale, whatever information? Think politics, right? I cannot tell you how many people are dedicated to that. I want to know what my politician's doing today. I want to know what he has to say about this. There you go. Now I'll tell you the smaller ones probably aren't going to be sending out things every single day, but maybe once a week they'll do an update of different political activities that are going on. Right. And then you send out a push notification pointing them back to that. Now let's look at the hair salon, right? So they can get their audience excited with a new hairstyle, a color, a product. You know, if we go back to that Instagram picture again, real quick. Oh, I closed it. So never mind. Yeah. So I closed it, but you know, they had multiple hairstyles. And so let's say that they had something come in, they could always, you know, create a video or put a picture on Instagram and then they can send a notification to their audience to check it out. If they don't want to have their own website or if they don't want to keep the communication on there, or they just want to keep their traffic going to Instagram, right? They get, you get better reach when you have engagement and activity. If you're like, Hey, I want to boost, I want to boost my Instagram page then that's what you do. Now I'm going to tell you local business getting a boost to Instagram. I don't know how well that algorithm is fine tuned to that, but I can say that if you're doing something like Google my business and you were to say, Hey, I'm going to be using Google my business, 
then, because literally you can just use that whole thing as a website if you wanted to, but you could use the app to help communicate with the customers and then drive them back to Google My Business and say, okay, look, now I'm getting a boost in activity there. That's going to help you rank in the, in the um, local searches, right? So there's a lot of different things that you can do. Now you could entice them into the location. Oh, check out this hairstyle that Jenny got last week or earlier this week. Um, we have a special coming up this weekend or in the next for Wednesday, Thursday, because those are the slowest days or something. Wednesday, Thursday, come on in and we'll do mom and daughter for free or mom and daughter special, something like that, right? So mom and then daughter for free or something. Um, are they doing spe something special for COVID? Now, this is something a lot of hair salons ended up getting and beauty salons beauty location. Anyway, they all got shut down, right? I can't, I didn't really think that there was a big deal. I'm like, who cares? They can't color their hair for a month or whatever until I listened to my mom. Now I'm the kind of person that'll stay home for two months and I don't cut my hair hardly ever because it just long and grows out. Right. My grandma is in her nineties. So I think she's 90, 91, something like that now. And she has trouble taking care of herself or anything. So my mom does a lot of it. And what she would do before the pandemic hit was she would take her into a, a salon to get her hair and her nails done, especially her toenails, right? Because if you don't manage that, it can turn into weird things. And so while we can do that at home, 90 year old has to have time. And my mom isn't exactly in the, you know, it's hard for her to do too. She's not exactly young either. So when that closed, it was really tough because my, my grandma really suffered because she couldn't get her hair done. She couldn't get her nails taken care of her toenails taken care of. And it was really tough for her. So, um, I, after I saw that and I went, okay, I, I can now understand the value of it. I, well, I don't personally like it. My daughter really hates when I cut her hair and I'm sure she would love to go and have it professionally cut because right now it's not even at all. And that's just because w things were closed when I cut it last. And now I'm letting it grow out to cover up my mistakes. Shh. So anyway, they can share that information of what they're doing. Are they doing something special indoors? Are they only, you know, have three booths at a time open? You know, what are they doing so they can reassure people to say, hey, it is safe to come in. Come on in, get your hair done, get your nails done, etc." Right. And then are they selling... Or, or do they sell products and then they don't normally ship, but they're now either going to ship or maybe deliver, right? Hey, you know, we got a special going on on this, this specific hair stuff, right? Oh yeah. we know you can't come to us right now, but let us come to you. In fact, there was uh, some people who were going to homes and doing it. Right. And so that's all, if that's what they're doing, they can communicate with them and hopefully that's over with, but still something to consider. So a few other considerations, target businesses that actually have decision makers. I mentioned that it seemed like it was relatively easy to connect with the owner of that hair salon, right? You can't go big brands, Starbucks. You're not going to find a decision maker in Starbucks. They think they're decision makers, but they cannot make a decision on this, right? Starbucks controls their communication. They are branded. They, I think, I don't know if they're franchise or not, but they are controlled by that corporation. So they have what they can and can't do. And I guarantee you, they cannot authorize an app. So skip those, right? Don't go into McDonald's. Don't go into Starbucks. Don't go into the pizza chains. Just skip those. If you can connect with somebody at a higher up level, or you have that connection, then all means go for it. But for the rest of us who don't have those connections, don't. It's just, it's rarely you have a local decision maker for technology. It's just rare, right? with brands. So go for the small or the local businesses. Now, if you have a local one that has like four or five locations, that doesn't mean that they're out because even though they are branded, they're just not a big brand. You don't want the national chains. Okay. So while you shouldn't just dismiss businesses because you don't think they will buy. So like hair salons, even though it's not likely they're going to buy, I wouldn't necessarily dismiss them, but you do want to avoid businesses. You don't think you can increase their value right? Like for me, I'm never going to reach out to a roofing company because I do not see the value. I've never met anybody in the roofing industry that says to me, oh yes, I can help them, right? If I can't help them, I'm not going to, don't go for those. You're just wasting your time because they're not going to see the value either. And another thing to consider online methods are cold outreach. Everything we're doing, whether we're reaching on Instagram or whatever else, you need to consider utilizing traditional business to business methods to reach your audience. And something I would do for that hair salon is go buy, 
go by, take a look at it, see how big it is, see how busy it is, see, you know, talk to them and, you know, find out if they're doing anything else. Um, more than likely you can help them. And that's what you're looking for. Can I help them? And can they afford it? That's pretty much the two things. Then join the chamber of commerce. If you want to, I'm going to say that loosely. I've never had luck with this, but you might. There's meetup.com, industry and trade associations, BNI, Business Network International. That seems to be a big one for, for services for business to business. So you might try that one. So what services can you offer? So keep in mind, this is related to Appomize. And so it's, you can offer app creation service. Now this can be a one-time setup fee or setup fee and recurring. As of right now, I do not think they can access the uh, push notifications without going through your account. So... I would recommend, I know they're working on it so that clients can get access to manage that. But until then, for now, I wouldn't necessarily say I'd recommend just a one-time fee unless you go in, if you buy the bundle, you can get access, I think, to promote it. So you could say, hey, go through this link, buy this, give me your login information, I'll set it up for you and hand it back to you. You could do that, but it's going to be a lot more complicated, right? Then you could do app hosting. You could charge monthly or annually. Now you, as of right now at least, you do not pay for hosting the app because Appomize, ho Appomize hosts the apps and they don't have a monthly charge at this time, right? At the time we're doing it now. And if you buy into it before they implement that, you wouldn't have a monthly charge. You'll be grandfathered in. You could charge a monthly or annual service fee. So you could charge, um, let's say that you're like, look, okay, we're going to charge, we need a minimum of $500 a year but that'll get you up to 10 minor changes, right? And by the way, instead of, and that'll give you a discount from $100 per change otherwise, right? You could do something like that. Now, when I say 10 minor changes, this would be like if they need to change their address or if they need to change some, some, I don't know, basic information in there, this wouldn't be a whole revamp of it or anything, right? You'd want to recharge for that. App management. So scheduling or sending notifications. It's so easy but you can go in there and have it scheduled out and do that and manage that right now for them. And in fact, like I said, this is the only way to do it unless they buy their own and, and until that gets implemented. Now you can integrate with SMS and email marketing. It's all part of the technology. So take a look at my review if you're interested in understanding that a little bit more. And then the sales page is an even better job. Combine with other services. And, you know, I did a design beast review yesterday, I think. And the reason why was because of this, right? So when you're building your app, you're going to have to do stuff like a logo. And if they don't have a logo, you're going to need to create one. And it, then you need to do other images. You know, your pages are going to have to have images. Your, your different elements are going to have need require you to have graphics. So if they're not going to provide that to you, or you don't want to have to ask for that, you can just be like, look, that's included with the service and then upsell it, right? Just be like, okay, charge more. Copywriting, which I actually have a, a new resource, which is amazing. So I'll, um, when we get to the copywriting video, of course, we'll talk more about all these, but when we get to that section, I'll include that. But video marketing services, I just showed you all the different platforms and video marketing services easily could go with that. Rewards and loyalty programs. You saw how it integrates. It's really easy to include, especially if your, if your client has, is reaching consumers, which they usually are, right? Most of the time, that's what we're working with when we're offering services. We're offering services that are now providing services or goods to consumers. And of course, more on many of these over the next videos in the series. All right. So I did get some questions asked, which I did answer some of them in here, but I want to specifically address them. Will this work for SEO? Yes and no. Okay. For local SEO, you're relying heavily on the Google My Business listing. So the GMB listing. So you're your website is not as critical, right? You can literally, you can actually have an entire business website run off of Google My Business. You don't have to have a separate website. I don't recommend that because if Google just decides to turn off your listing or somebody ends up hacking or whatever, you have no way to communicate with your audience unless you collected emails, I guess. Or they add push notifications. So if for local, the emphasis is on the Google My Business listing, the website, the value of the website actually comes in and that it helps the Google My Business listing understand what your website's about. You can only put so many keywords for services and stuff on your actual Google My Business listing. So what it does is it searches your website 
for those keywords that don't fit, right? And a good one would be digital marketing services. That's not listed in Google My Business. Internet services is, but that's not really the same thing. You might think it is, but somebody else doesn't. So if somebody goes in and looks for digital marketer, that's, I don't, it might be one now, but it wasn't as of a year ago. So I'm like, okay, um, how's it going to find it? And I tested this repeatedly and it's pulling the information from the website. So that's the only benefit. And is, I think you should still be able to read the site, but still, if they don't have a site, like in the case of the hair salon we just did, then they, you can still use this app as the website, right? So this is kind of like a great opportunity to fit it. Oh, you haven't wanted to build a website because it costs you $2,500 for three pages. Hey, guess what? Why don't we go ahead and look at this? Plus I'll add all these other things on. You'll pass that on to your people below you. And there we go. You know, we've got this nice symbiotic relationship. Now for non-local SEO, so for your national ones or whatever, who knows? It is like, ugh, it's hard to test. So I do have testing going on right now in it. I've got some things that are, are blocking the ability to test it at the moment because one, I have to build it the rest of the way, right? But if you're going to build a brand new entity on a brand new website, it's going to take two plus years to start to rank nowadays. It's just with the most recent Google changes, it's just really difficult to rank. So you can do it. There's things you can do it, but you'd, you need to watch the SEO services, the local SEO services, which will also teach you about SEO services in general. And that'll help you understand why you have to dump a bunch of resources into it. So if it's a brand new entity, I wouldn't even worry about SEO in the first place. But if they have a website already, right, they already have a website, it's ranking, don't change that, right? You just say, look, yeah, we'll just add on. So we're doing this with um, Crafty Universe, right? We have craftyuniverse.com. It's so convoluted for us and so integrated with different things that I'm not moving in. And it I don't know if it ranks or not, but it's already set up. It's already doing stuff. And we are like, Chrissy and I were like, you know what? Why don't we make this simple? And why don't we do Crafty Universe News? Right? And so then people who download the app are specifically requesting information about Crafty Universe. And they're part of our that little ecosystem. And that means that we can focus our app on our goals. Right? But we can still use our website for ranking and everything else. They coexist. They complement each other, right? So I wouldn't, if they already have an existing website, don't say you want to replace it unless it's crappy. If it's a bad website, tell them to take it down. If it's ranking, it's by sheer luck. If it's if it's just not mobile optimized, if people can't, I mean, it, it's a case by case basis, but that's what I would argue for SEO. Who would download an app like this? And I've already talked about this, but my husband and I got into a heated debate about this and I have no idea why, but I guess that's what you do when you have nothing to talk about. But think about why people use apps, right? Convenience, think banking, fun, think games, special information, think sales, politics, etc. People who download apps don't want to miss out. That's what they're doing, right? They don't want to miss out or they're using it for a specific reason. This means your client needs to have something to offer that their hardcore audience doesn't want to miss out on, right? Your most loyal followers, what do they not want to miss out on? Oh my gosh, they want to buy from you. They want specials. Make sure that's what you're providing in the app. That's what the purpose of the app is for, right? Not all of the followers of a business will download an app. They're not going to. I guarantee you that there are more Walmart shoppers that don't have the app than do. Right? Because honestly, it's not very good enough. But the people who download the app for a business are probably hot audience. And I did this to remind you guys of your of your um, traffic here, right? You got your cold audience, your medium or warm audience, and then your hot audience. And the further hot they get, so the more likely they are to buy something, the less there are. Facebook is everything. Instagram is everything. YouTube is everything. And yeah, your email marketing might be like right here, but guess what? If you can get here and you can get the people who are hyper buyers and the people who are going to be like, Hey, yes, I want to buy everything that you promote. You're going to make money. You're going to make way more money doing that than trying to go, oh, I'm going to be up here and gather people onto my Facebook page. No, this is about getting repeat buyers. This is about getting more money, a better return on the investment, right? 
So apps on their own do not generate more traffic as in new traffic. I should say they will, they should generate more traffic as in repeat buyers more often, not missing out. Right. So again, that creates repeat buyers. You can utilize the audience to help your other marketing efforts. So if, for example, you're like, Hey, you know what? I really need to boost my Facebook presence. Then you tell this group, Hey, come over here. Have you liked the social media page? How, can you like this video or whatever it is? Just tell them to check it out. You know, whatever it is, you can do that too. That just depends on their strategy and everything. So again, the app itself does not generate more traffic. It generates a better return on investment. It takes a lot of money to get a buyer. You want to keep those buyers and you want to keep them loyal to you. You know, think about that Coke versus Pepsi, right? Coke wants Coke followers. They don't want their Pepsi followers on their app. They want to push out information about here, buy this, here, do this. They want to make money from their Coke followers, not from other followers, not from other people who are interested in other drinks, right? Pepsi, same thing. They don't want to be promoting to the Coca-Cola people. Now, somebody might like both, but if they get a thing saying, hey, 24 hours, you can get a discount on such and such, just come here or enter this contest or whatever it is, right? I don't know what they do because I think people just drink it all the time. Except for me, I miss it. So, you know, th- you got to think about it like that. Like this is your your opportunity to be a brand, your clients, I guess I should say, your clients get to be branded and they get to build this followers and you get to target onto the people who are most likely to buy. And that's the purpose of the app. So um, let me see. I think I do have more. There we go. So more on all of these in upcoming videos, right? So the next video in the series, we're going to look at rewards and loyalty programs. So this should have helped you hopefully understand apps better, get a better idea of if it's for you. And if you want to get started, if you decide to purchase Appomize or whatever program you choose to get, you are going to have an opportunity to learn from them and their program, right? This was just to kind of give you an idea of how you can, what, what the value of apps are from the, the rosy colored glasses of Appomize. And it's just give you some ideas, right? Get you thinking, help you see that, Hey, it's not so bad trying to find places that need help. There's plenty of them out there, right? And you can just go out, just go around your community and see, go talk to people, go talk to businesses, see what problems they're having, communicating with customers, you know, listen and learn about what's there. And then of course, pick your resource and then you'll learn more about that specific resource and the suggestions from the people who own it. Okay. Links to resources are in the description. You can also check out my ebook, $10,000 a month with only 10 sales. That link will also be in the description. And if you like this type of content, I know it's longer. The entire point is to be a lengthy discussion for you to get ideas and understand it better. Right? So if you do like this content, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. And then please join the Facebook group, come live on Thursdays and ask questions either in the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, right? So either one. And I thank you for, you know, going through this. And if you have questions, just reach out. I I recommend the Facebook group. That's the easiest way to post questions. You can post them in the comments as well. And every now and again, I do an extra video to address questions when it, when I can, right? Thanks.